Nowadays, these kids do a thing called a reading vlog where they sit and read a book and they think that makes for good content and they react to the book as they read it. I actually saw this one booktuber lay down on her tummy and just read a book without addressing the camera for 30 minutes and she got like 50,000 views. It was a half hour of that. Come read with me. So we're going to do a reading vlog. I saw another booktuber do it. He checks in during the day. <laughs> he doesn't know what he reads, but he, he checks in during the day. He likes to talk about what he's going to eat. I'm not going to talk about what I'm going to eat. I'm going to talk about the book. We'll see how this goes. So I just read the first 30 pages in a blink. You're going to get hooked immediately. You won't be able to stop. And 30 pages doesn't seem like a whole lot. But in that time, Fakasi paints the picture. It's heartbreaking, horrific, and he sets the stage for something incredible. You could see the potential of this book and you're not dreading that that uh, page count because you're like, yes, you're gonna need every bit of that to pull off what you've set up. So it's it's great. Uh, I'm, I'm thrilled. This could be my favorite Fricasse book. I don't know, obviously, but this has a little bit of everything so far and it's just 30 pages in. I'm done with the first hundred pages. I am now just starting on part three. And this book is loaded with stuff. There is so much going on. I don't think you're going to be disappointed. <laughs> There's like a ghost story, a cosmic horror story, revenge, bullies. It feels like it. I mean, it feels there are things about it that feel like Stephen King's it. And, and this is just basically, I feel like he's still assembling the pieces. It's, there's, it's a crime novel as well. So, you know, it reminds me a little bit of The Listener by Robert McCammon. These are all just connections I'm making, but this is definitely original. Nothing like I've ever read before. So I just got to part five and it feels like we've entered Endgame but I'm only 174 pages into this 600 page book. So what else could be left? But where does it go from here? This is crazy. What else is in these other pages? I mean, that's my impression at this point. Henry's been kidnapped, he's been taken to the farmhouse, and I assume they're gonna be asking for a ransom and the negotiations will happen. But there, there doesn't seem to be that much story left as far as the kidnapping goes to to justify so much more book i'm on page 220 and this is a great book the tension is ratcheting up henry is dealing with his captors in an insanely inventive way he's detected another presence it's just crazy the way everything is sort of falling into place and as a reader, you're wondering, how does this all resolve? How do these pieces click together? And what sort of brutal image will they create once they're all lined up? For people who watch my channel and in particular attend my um, Monday night live streams and, and know all the people in that community, there's a nice little Easter egg on page 227. <laughs> I read it. I was like, my eyes bugged out. It's awesome. Well, I'm on page 321, over the halfway point. Things are gearing up a lot. I mean, the whole book has been a gearing up. The this, uh, this setup, the delivery, and the execution of the plan has been really great. Um, I do like that it's something of a police procedural. I, I like that detective work. I like seeing how people get caught up in their own web. These characters are terrific. The bad guys you hate, the good guys you root for. I don't know what's going on with Henry. <laughs> and well, I don't want to spoil anything for you, but I think things are about to go off the rails. Well, friends, I'm on page 433 and we have well and truly entered Endgame. This book took a little bit of a turn that felt like Nightmare on Elm Street, but it also made me itchy as hell. You will be itchy 
as hell. I couldn't stop scratching everywhere when you read this. You'll you'll know why when you get to that spot. <laughs> you'll, it's it's an itchy, itchy. I wouldn't expect to identify a book as itchy. This book has a little of everything, so itchy is part of that. It's a book you actually feel on your skin all over. I'm pretty much at the end, and suddenly that title takes on a whole new context. So I just finished The Child Alone with Strangers. The book was amazing. The ending was just as five stars the rest of the book. Let's hand it over to Jeff for the review. So I don't know if you'd call that scientific or conclusive, but reading vlogs are stupid. I think most people just want to hear the review. And I was trying to be vague because I don't want to give away spoilers, but I'm not going to tell you what's happening at each point in the book. Just my overall reaction. I mean, if you still need to know what the book's about, it's about a kid who has these extra special powers, who gets abducted by this crew, and they're kidnapping him to collect the ransom that was his insurance settlement from an accident earlier in the book. So he makes the papers, the bad guys get a whiff that the kid gets a nice fat settlement, and, and they go for it. So they take the kid. But they don't know that the kid has these powers. They also don't know there's something in their hideout. They go, they take the kid to a farmhouse out in the middle of the woods, and they don't know that there's something already there. It really doesn't want guests. And that is the curveball that is thrown at all the characters. So what did I think? After finishing the book, it's a five-star read. The book is mega awesome. It is like if Quentin Tarantino met up with Stephen King at the Overlook and they both got snowed in and it's just the two of them and they had a typewriter, all kinds of paper, and a fully stocked bar and they were snowed in and they just got shit hammered and decided to write a story. This is the story. Each one writing a chapter and then the other one's like, get out of here, I'm going to go even crazier than you're crazy. I'm going to out crazy you. And they keep one-upping each other all night long until the, the, the alcohol's all gone and the snow cat comes to tunnel them out of the overlook and they head off to, to, to the hospital because they're severely dehydrated. They drank a lot of alcohol. They got to get their stomachs pumped. And this is the story that's sitting next to that smoking hot typewriter. Um, this is the brainchild of that crazy snowed in alcohol fueled night. Cause it's, it is a crazy book. Uh, the whole thing is, is an escalation. It keeps getting a little bit crazier. And these killers, these bad guys are real bad, real bad. I, I dug that characterization, I think if Fricassi wanted to write a prequel or stories about these individuals, that would be cool because they were, they, were, they were crazy. And while this book was totally, completely original, it reminded me of classic Stephen King, the same vibe when you shut that final page and you close the book. And it's that vibe, that frequency that your brain is on after a classic King read. It's the exact same one. It's the same station playing the same songs awesome um the book also reminded me of the listener necroscope cujo the shining cabin at the end of the world a lot of tremendous comparisons but again no equal this is a completely original story if you like horror if you like police procedurals if you like revenge if you like cosmic horror if you like ghost stories if you like people taking down bullies, there's so many things. I, I think that anybody could find something in this book to just absolutely love. It's the whole package for me. Fricassi throws everything at these bad guys, and, and it, you just enjoy it. It's just a wild ride at the end. It goes, it goes crazy. It turns into 600 pages that went by too fast. Epic stuff, brilliant stuff. I also loved that the characters of Dave and Mary were like dad and mom, D and M, and Henry is like hero. At least, I don't know if that's what Fricassi intended, but I, I, I noticed that. I don't know why I noticed that, but I did, and I liked it. It's just a little little fun wordplay, that's all. It's 
don't get all upset about it. So that's it. It's a five-star read. I would go get it if I were you. Uh, it's available at VJ Books is where I would get a signed first edition. Or you can get it on Amazon and, and hope for the best for how they ship. They ship like ship. <laughs> um, it's, it's ironic. Amazon started out selling books and they forgot how to ship books. But yes, I would recommend you get this book. Five stars means... I can't recommend it anymore. This is five out of five stars. Just to be clear, if you're thinking I have a 10-star system, I don't. It's five. I'd love to see a limited edition of this book someday. Uh, Will I get that wish? I don't know. I don't know. There's so much great visual material to mine for this book if it had art. So you picking up my vibe there, Levidian? But anyway, just enjoy the book now. Read it now so that you can preserve that limited edition if it ever arrives. (laughs) It's a great, great read. Did I say that? 